An outpouring of tears from parents whose children died in a sinking ferry disaster has reminded more than 70 surviving teenagers just how lucky they are to be alive. It was a somber procession to their classes today as the students went back to school for the first time since the ferry accident. And many bowed their heads as they cried and walked slowly from a bus to the school entrance. Some stopped to hug the parents of their friends. The deep grief and anger at Don Juan High School in Anson outside of Seoul is a reflection of what many Koreans have felt since the April 16th sinking. 300 people died or are missing. Japan plans to hold talks with North Korea next week. It's an effort to work out the details to reinvestigate the fate of Japanese citizens kidnapped by the reclusive state decades ago. Since North Korea last month agreed to reopen the probe, Japan has been waiting eagerly to see how it will be carried out. The outcome is hoped to potentially bring about a breakthrough in a bitter dispute between the two East Asian nations. North Korea promised in 2008 to reopen the probe, but it never followed through. It also failed in promises made in multilateral talks aimed at ending its nuclear weapons program and declared the negotiations had ended. A French doctor has been acquitted of poisoning charges after giving lethal injections to seven terminally ill patients. But Britain's Supreme Court said an assisted suicide ban is incompatible with human rights, fueling the arguments of those who say the duty of doctors is to end the suffering of those beyond treatment. It comes a day after France's top administrative court ordered an end to the treatment of a comatose man, a decision later blocked by the European Court of Human Rights. The rulings cast new light on the legal struggle over medical treatments for the terminally ill or patients in vegetative states. Dozens of Palestinian prisoners have ended their 63-day-long hunger strike today, and this is after reaching a deal with Israeli prison authorities. Since 2012, Palestinian prisoners have staged a series of hunger strikes, sometimes as individuals and sometimes in larger groups, to protest administrative detention, a policy that keeps some prisoners in custody for months without charges. Israel has defended the practice as a necessary tool to stop militant activity, including attacks. Authorities in Pakistan are looking for a gunman who opened fire at a plane yesterday, just as it was landing in the volatile northwest. One person was killed, two others were injured. The violence in Peshawar comes two weeks after gunmen laid siege to the country's busiest airport in Karachi. A female passenger on board the plane died on the way to the hospital. The plane was coming from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The woman had also been visiting her husband and had also gone on a religious pilgrimage. There was no immediate claim of responsibility. The price of crude oil fluctuated today as investors monitored the turmoil in Iraq and weighed a report claiming U.S. export controls would be loosened. Meanwhile, the Obama administration says it would allow foreign buyers to purchase a type of ultralight oil known as condensate, which can be turned into gasoline, jet fuel, and diesel. International crude fell further from a nine-month high reached earlier this week after the head of the group of major oil exporters said that Iraq's production was normal. Ninety-five percent of capacity in the south of Iraq is unaffected by the violence. Over a dozen Muslims have sued the U.S. government after learning they were likely on a no-fly list, something the government still won't confirm, and they found their only option for justice was to fill out an online appeal form. But a federal judge in Oregon ruled that the Department of Homeland Security must give people a better option to pursue a claim if they believe they were wrongly put on the list. U.S. District Judge Anna Brown says the process falls far short of satisfying the requirements of due process. She said the government must tell people what unclassified information was used to put them on the list. The September 11th Museum in New York has seen 300,000 visitors pass its door since its opening in May. Officials say this far exceeded their expectations, and organizers see it as a strong start for the Ground Zero Museum, which had faced questions about its $24 ticket price. Built amid the former World Trade Center's footprints, the underground museum was designed as a more historical, immersive complement to the Memorial Plaza and waterfall pools above.